That's so good. It's, it's so Shut up, Hulkster. We got NCFS coming up. <laughs> Get your tank hand hands away from that rock, Jax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna bring. Get your tiny hands. Aluminum ass bitch. Get, your tiny hands. Get over like, here. Get your tiny hands. He's just like, I, I wish they never would have given me hands. these arms. I wish they would have left my arms ripped off. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's, 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 please, 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 let's start this process. Um, when, you, when you message me, bro, I told you. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I, know, I know you have some things to say. Alright, so, <laughs> so since we dropped the, we'll just drop the needle. It's NCFS, Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. This week we are going to be talking about two projects that are of varying quality. Mortal Kombat, <laughs> which we saw on HBO Max, not at a theater, which is a very uh, saving grace for me for this one. Uh, and also, um, The Falcon and uh winter soldier episodes five and six uh spoiler alerts for all of this stuff before we get going uh dp why don't you tell everybody our contact stuff since you have said it so many times and done a, such a good job nerdcyclopedia.com people that's where you'll find all our um ads at nerdcyclopedia <laughs> on instagram on facebook and also on twitter we are at nerdcyclopedia make sure that you are listening to us on all our podcasts um you know uh, outlets and affiliates stitcher uh, spotify apple Podcasts, google play tune in wherever you listen uh, iheart radio wherever you listen to your favorite podcast we are nine times out of ten there <laughs> <laughs> and when we're not it's on it's on purpose we, we promise there's some places we just won't go the web gets dark uh <laughs> Speaking of dark, this mo we're going to talk about Mortal Kombat first because it has it, it's, it's <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, I'm sorry, now, I keep laughing every time you mention that. Uh, what what Mortal Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> I just keep doing that. I'm sorry about that. You're just that. giggling about. You're just giggling because you can't stop picturing Jax's tiny tiny. <laughs> I got the small hand. Yeah. He's, he's, like, small, gonna, he's, he's a small he's got rock. my small hand. Like, oh, like, man. Goro shows up and he's just like this hulking 900 pound lizard with eight arms. Like, Arr! and then he's just like, these hands. Are, are you talking about the hand. fake Incredible Hulk? Yeah, the fake Incredible Hulk. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So, everybody. So, Mortal Kombat is this is this movie that is based on, and, and this is the best part about it, based on a video game series of the same name. Uh Gentlemen, you know, I remember playing this series a lot when it came out. It was the, the you know, the real button issue, video game button issue. Back in the day, it wasn't first-person shooters. It was this this stuff. Uh, before we get into the talking about the movie, what is everybody's relationship with those games? Did you guys play them when we were, you know, in the 90s? Um, are you guys familiar with the lore at all? Like, just let me ask you guys that. DP, what about you? How, how familiar are you with Mortal Kombat with a K? So um, I, I played the game a few times, um, especially when it got into like the, you know, the DC versus Mortal Kombat stuff. So I'm definitely familiar with it. I wasn't so much in it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wasn't so much of a, a big player of like those, you know, the fighting games and stuff. I was more of a Resident Evil fan and, you know, love those type games. Yeah. The combat stuff, um, Street Fighter stuff. You know, eh, you know, it, it it was okay to me. So I was that that was my level of interest in them. All right, what about you, Michael? How much how much uh, did you play these games when they were popular? I mean, I was a, I was a huge fan of the when it first came out because I I mean I enjoyed the the whole blood and the controversy. Like, oh my god, they're they're ripping someone's head off and and showing blood on a video game. Like this is this is unreal. You, you can't do this. So of course, me being a little teenager, that's going to lure me in, and I want to play. And, uh, you know, I go on my AOL account, and about 15 <laughs> minutes later, after I get it downloaded, I find all this, the secret moves, and, and next thing you know, I'm, I'm Scorpion, and I'm taking someone's head off, you know? And it was just, it was fun to play those games. I didn't really play them much after that one. I was more into the Tekken games, honestly. But, uh, but I mean, of course, I know all the characters and everything, and I've watched all the beginning movies, so, you know, I... I had to watch this Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh man. How about you, Trenton? Did you I know you're we're kinda younger than these guys. I know we're a little bit, just a couple years. I yeah. think I was I was like maybe ten when this game came out and my parents were very much like, you know, no. you can't play it. What was no. your what's your memory of like when this started? 
So I was born, obviously, it's like you kind of, I was born in 85. So the first couple I've seen in arcades, I watched people playing, but I didn't, I wasn't allowed to buy it. And I remember my, the first one my parents bought me was Mortal Kombat 3 on the Genesis. That was my yeah. first like personal ownership, other than going to the arcade and playing the arcade a couple of times. But um, I would say as far as I detailed Mortal Kombat, I'd probably say like a seven or eight out of 10. Ooh. I actually have 11 uh, in the, on my Xbox One, so I, I play it still, and but more like uh, Douche, I like the Tekken uh, type style games a little better. Street Fighter, if they do it right again, but yeah, I like Street Fighter. That was good. Street Fighter and this were like were, were like siblings. There was a sibling. It was like one A, one B, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was some people preferred this. Now my favorite thing, you know, as I I like Mortal Kombat better because it had fatalities, and I'm an older brother, and frankly, there's nothing better. Then winning the match and then pulling off Scorpion's helmet, you know, his head, and it's going. <sighs> I mean, I just love that stuff. Uh, I I know in college they the first time there was like online versus was on Mortal Kombat on PS2. We played a lot of that up in the uh, old demolished apartment. Um, I knew some. I know some of this stuff. Like I knew I knew who Jax was essentially when he showed up, and I was wondering why he had arms. And they answered that question so fast for me. Uh, <laughs> really fast. That <laughs> was pretty quick. His arms didn't last long. No, all right. Jack's arms. <laughs> so, so this this movie does pass in uh, by my new standard that we've established for this show, which is this what we think it's going to be. And frankly, uh, there were several fatalities, uh, including Jax's sad sad time with his real arms. <laughs> several sad, several really kind of really gruesome fatalities. Why don't we go around and Trent? Why don't you start us off? What was your favorite of the fatalities uh, from from this? I would say it was Kung Lao's because it was like spot on. The uh, the saw blade with the um <laughs> the hat. The hat. Yes, yeah. yes. 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 That, that was my moment. <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome. What about you, Michael? What was your favorite? I, I totally agree with Trent on that one. When he did the saw hat and that and it just sliced her right in half. I mean, yeah. I mean that that's just such a quality kill. I mean. <laughs> It's better than going Kano wins, you know. I was so much better. Than that. <laughs> yeah, right. What about you, DP? What was your favorite uh, fatality? I like when um, Fake Incredible Hulk got, you know, got his butt whipped and everything. So <laughs> that was a, um, you know, that was a no annoying pleasure. You know, I'm like, what the heck is this? Let's please beat his butt down. And you know, my man, um, was 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 his name? Liu Kang. Yeah, Liu Kang. Yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah. not Liu Kang. Kong, uh, Cole Young. Oh, yeah. Cole, Cole Young, Cole Young, Young. Luke Cole Luke. Young. Yeah. Was he yeah. in the game? What? He was no, not. We'll, we'll, we'll get, get into that shortly. Okay, 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 okay. So we'll get into yeah, that my wife thought he was Johnny Cage. So. I thought he was Johnny Cage. I'm with, I'm with your wife, man. I thought that was Johnny. Cage. How did you <laughs> think that's Johnny Clay, Cage? He didn't wear sunglasses. Big, 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 Somebody uh, has but, to be. Why wasn't he in this movie? But, but, but hold up, though. The way the way the way they pulled the the way. I understand that now, you know. But the way the camera, you know, panned over to that poster at the end there just made me think okay well i know there was no cole young in that in the in the um you know the lore and everything so he must have this must have been like you know what he was going to hollywood to play as johnny cage or something like that but nah, that didn't man, make didn't any sense he's going to go find other people i must have had the, the volume barking. down it must have been down <laughs> you already yeah. tuned out at that point <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, he, he lost the plot, but he but he did see the the Kung Lao fatality. You know, he saw that that that, and that and I love how they set that that fatality up with, you know, uh, Shang Tsung being like, "Oh, check out this fighter. That's gonna she she's gonna be real impressive." And then right away, like it's right away over. And he says, "Floss victory." So so really cool there. I thought I thought everything was everything was really cool about the design, but the Shang Tsung design because Shang Tsung looked like. He was wearing like a bodice, you know, like it was, he looked like it was a lady's outfit for serious. <laughs> and hearing Ricky Lau talking about, not talking about calculations as Shang Tsung made me feel like that was a real missed opportunity. Uh, I like the soul sucking, uh, you know, Kung Lao getting his soul sucked out. I liked how that was an emotion. That was the emotional fulcrum of this movie. Literally. Well, they had to have that in there because in the original that combat, that's how the movie starts. So yeah, that's 100% like that accurate. In the movie somewhere. Hmm. Yeah. The accuracies were pretty good in this. I'll say that. There were a lot of accuracies I can appreciate. That's about, probably about it. <laughs> accuracies. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. so I also, I did like the opening scene too. 
I thought that that was a good the samurai. That's, that's why they showed us the first seven minutes before the movie came out. <laughs> They're trying to get us hyped for it. It's like we we really did really good this first seven minutes, guys. You gotta check it out. Oh yeah, that, the, yeah, the first seven minutes. I mean that that prologue and everything. You know that that did its job. You know, I wish he was in there like you know majority of the movie, but you know that's a good actor right there too. Yeah, yeah. I I did appreciate the Sub Zero Scorpion fight. Like, yeah. I mean, as, as a fight scene goes, that was well choreographed and uh, the effects were spot on for that fight. You know, the storyline up to the fight, oh, okay, but the actual fight itself at least was, like, entertaining of that purpose. So let me ask you this. If you're, if you're you know, a badass murdering, like, ninja in 1617, why can't you be Sub-Zero then? Why do you have to have a different name? Why, why do you have to change your name to Sub-Zero later on? Why can't he just have been Sub-Zero in the before time? Uh, it seemed like a... Uh, it seemed he hasn't established like. himself as Sub-Zero, you know? He hasn't earned the right to... <laughs> he hasn't gotten the franchise yet. I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm so spoiled by Marvel and, like, other movies. I'm just trying to wait for... I'm just trying to get the, the, the reason why he calls himself Sub-Zero, you know? He just He's opens cool. up. I'm so for- I know this. He's cold. So, he's, he's cold. <laughs> but he reason- just he just introduces himself. I'm Sub Zero. But to be <laughs> fair, the reason there's a Sub Zero and a Scorpion is just because they could make two characters with half the space if they just made one yellow and one blue. <laughs> and I mean that's really why. <laughs> that's really why there's two of them, which is kind of funny. I mean Sub Zero works for him, but why Scorpion? I mean it's not like he's a, you know just because he has a little th- thing that he throws. I mean. That little looks like a scorpion tail. I mean, is that why he's called Scorpion? Scorpions don't blow fire. Last time I checked, no, they don't. No, but yeah, that's that, that because tail they thing. A yellow, yeah. a yellow ninja name, and so Scorpion wins that that decision battle. Everyone like mm. that? Nobody. All right. Well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so this is this is another one of those HBO HBO Max uh, first run releases, which we've been getting uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, which is really, you know, amplified the value of HBO Max. So get get HBO Max, everybody. Uh, you know, Kong Godzilla versus Kong was really successful. I think we all agreed. You know, when we talked about it that, that that particular movie was a really good movie. Although, if you didn't have King Kong in that movie, it would have been really a terrible, a terrible movie. Guys, is is what is this movie? Is this movie just missing King Kong in it? Should there just be a King Kong in this movie, and it would be like maybe a five star movie? What do you think? Or to destroy yeah. all uh, of them. Yeah, I don't how know. Come, how come we all like emotionally registered with King Kong and none of us emotionally <laughs> registered with Cole Young? Like, why you, you is, know, why yeah, is that? Yeah, why yeah, is that? yeah, 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 please. Yeah. I, I, just don't, I, don't, I don't know why you would create a character that nobody has any idea of, introduce him <laughs> in this lure. Yeah. That, like, an <laughs> that make, makes no sense. They make him an OP character that has like, a vibranium, like some like Wakandan technology. That he <laughs> Wakandans are in on this Shao Kahn. Yeah, like... like, you know, he has like Wakandan energy. He's deflecting stuff. He keeps getting stronger. And like the fight scenes, they're completely choreographed. So every fight I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. But just the character, it just, his backstory, it just doesn't like the bloodline. At first I thought it was going to be like his son or something or, but like he's a descendant, descendant. This is going to be what, two, 300 years Come on. Yeah. That, that was, he, that was he's a stretched. lot of generations removed, man. Yeah, that's too <laughs> stretched for me. I wait I a minute. Know. He wasn't that baby in a baby carriage? No, oh my no that was his really? Oh, yeah. wow. so that was in the 1700s, like what, 1600s? How many, or so 400 years ago, so 1617. Ooh. So 400 years, you Come figure on, Sam. 20, years hey. per, 20 years per I'm, generation. Hey. That's 20 greats ago. So you would think <laughs> the dragon bub would get diluted at some point, but nope. Right. Nope. I mean, he could have went through space and time like the the one guy in the hat did, you know, um, and and did his, you know, it, yeah, right. The one guy in the hat <laughs> with, with the sparkly eyes. <laughs> with the with the sparkly eyes. And what happened to the tournament? They kept talking about tournament, That's tournament, the tournament. Oh, oh. There is no That's tournament the yet because Shang Tsung could not hold himself back from attacking the Earth Realm. And listen, Shao Kahn is breathing down his neck. And now you've gotten one of Shao Kahn's kids killed. You're in some trouble, Shang Tsung. So yeah, you're going to make a move on Earthrealm. What are you talking about, DP? You don't understand this stuff. 
<laughs> Obviously, this is ridiculous. a prequel to the 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 actual Mortal Kombat. Is that what I'm t- is that oh, what yeah, I'm that, gathering that's here? What, that's they're setting up. They're totally setting up for. Oh um, yeah, this is a this is a that's trilogy. Where they interview introduce oh, Johnny okay. Cage and yeah. Katana. Okay. You know, they're saving them from multiple Mortal Kombat. I want Baraka. <sighs> this is wow. a trilogy wow. setup. This is yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. I, I was also waiting for okay. So see, so so Jax had dropped or um. Cole Young had dropped the one line about them being to fight all all fight um, Sub Zero together, and that never happened. It was <laughs> well. <laughs> hey, did Cole, uh, if, did if, Cole if, say if, that? Yeah, we all hate him. So <laughs> he's the character. Yeah. Like he's the character they're gonna like kill. Made up character. <laughs> they're gonna kill him at the beginning of two. This all this is all setting up a big twist at the beginning of Mortal Kombat two, where Cole Young just gets his head ripped off by Barack. It's gonna be great. Be really well, even, even for a cheesy movie, that's a crazy. You can't just drop a a, a smoking gun like that and just we'll take him together. Have it, and, and it just not just not happen. You know that <laughs> that's come on now. And the ninja that's like writing one on one. And then this ninja well, from hell shows up and and kills the other guy and then just goes and then disappears, <laughs> disappears <laughs> and that's it. And they're all just like, well, thank God that dude showed up. We didn't in some trouble. <laughs> Well, they're supposed to last like the duration, so I don't know why you would kill off Sub Zero, which is like one of the strongest. He's not even like I know tied. Why. You can't kill him. I can answer He's this it. question. They killed off Sub Zero because Sub Zero comes back as a different villain after Sub Zero dies in the, in the game. Be, no like, sector or no in the game? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Hmm, okay. So he comes back. So there's multiple yeah, Sub Zero. They, 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 yeah, they bring him back. The Lin Kuei has another one. Uh, I guess, or the she and Ray. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, boy. So this movie was sort of like. Now let's talk about Sonya Blade and Jax. Let's talk about them for a minute because this was maybe like the <laughs> stupidest part of this whole movie. I feel Sonya this... Blade was a forced character, <laughs> right? Like you could have, you didn't have to. Like, why not just give her a dragon? Why did you not just give her a dragon? She could have had it the whole damn time. Why? I mean, she's she's obviously very deadly, right? Why hold yeah. off on it? What the what is the whole point of that? Because Jax has one. Why does he have one? He gets his arms ripped off five minutes into this. Like, if they would have just taken him off of life support, Sonya would have gotten yeah. the dragon right then, right? She just would have right. had to, and, well, and she'd had to do it herself. In the temple, like, you come on into the temple. You can train with us. <laughs> do, you think, do you think, DP, that if Sonya Blade had smothered Jax, would she have inherited his dragon, Mark? Is I that guess. technically how that works? That's, hey, you know. What are the rules of Mortal Kombat, Dragon Mark? <laughs> they don't know who's is, isn't this, bad. You kill, yeah, you isn't kill the person shame? with the dragon, you take the dragon. <laughs> this is a shame that there's no positive energy from this. I saw, this is telling the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I see the frustration going on. Sam's confused. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I will, I will say this. I did, I did for like the first one half of one second think that Sonya Blade was being played by Rachel McAdams for like literally until like the hair <laughs> She does was look like Rachel McAdams. I was just like, bit, huh? I was like why is she hair? in this movie? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, it's not her. Thank goodness. The world is real. I started fast forward, and I'm not going to lie during the movie. There are some points. When they were walking through the desert for 20 minutes, that was a fast forward. <laughs> but it was nice <laughs> that they played that song. That the whole I don't time. even know. I didn't listen. I did fast forward that whole I section. I mean, obviously, well, this movie was not. I I, 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 I did like the the part where they pissed the Aussie off and everything, you know, that made him, um, you know, See, that, do his... that's the that's the main point that ruined the movie for me. When did they have to like <laughs> unlock powers? Like this is Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, literally a video when do I get my power? <laughs> like, what is that? So when you and think Ed... about it, like Cole's major power was that he got his ass whipped all the time by everybody, right? All of them. Everybody always whipped on Cole's ass. And then Cole showed up overpowered, right? <laughs> a, and what is this but someone's little brother just getting beat up over and over and over again and learning the cheat code and coming back and playing. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, you can't beat him up. You can't touch him, and he's OP. And that is why we all hate Cole. And that is <laughs> he's, he's spam, Cole is spamming the A button is what he is. Yeah, he's just he's hitting doing A that. over yeah, and right? over again. What was that? Yeah, that's it. He, he, he's, <laughs> he's the character they curate to give them. They give you ten full strength, ten stamina, ten endurance. Like, <laughs> he created this character. <laughs> how do you kill Goro that fast? And Goro doesn't even do like his legendary stomp or nothing. Like they just missed the plot with Goro. 
I didn't like the yeah. way he looked, like the Hulk, but this, he didn't this... do any like anything that he even has. Hey, do you guys remember that Reptile was in this movie? <laughs> yeah, he was awful as well too. My... Not in a ninja costume. Oh my god, <laughs> Holly! Holly kept saying, "Look, she jumps before he punches her. Look, she jumps before he." Punches. She kept saying like the choreography was off, like with the, with the CGI, <laughs> and that's the thing. If, if the choreography is off with the CGI, it just means you're lazy, because that just means <laughs> you just gotta like scoot up. You know, a couple frames, and that's all you got to do. Uh, yeah, that's just someone going, I think this is good enough. We're good here. <laughs> As the person that edits all our stuff, I will say, if it looks bad, it is laziness. That is just how this, how this the, the, works. The, the, re the realm that the bad guys were in was, was that the the um the effects were CGI, and that, that was just so bad, man. We needed the, Zack Snyder to get that setting. Uh, <laughs> 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 that was good. That was good. Zach that Snyder, was good. Zach shouldn't do this movie because because Goro has four biceps and you know that he can. It's just extra focus. For him. Uh, Zach Snyder would have took this plot and made a much better movie out of this. It would. It would hours. because it would have been a three-hour music video and it would have been. <laughs> it would have won five Oscars because it would have been the best music video ever directed. God damn it! That's what would have happened. Uh, and and as as is though we get this movie and you're right. Not a lot of positive energy. I mean. All the fights you want to see didn't really happen. Shang Tsung didn't have to throw down. You know, Liu some... Kang was a lost character. I mean, he's supposed to be the main character in Mortal Kombat, and he's just this lost character. Sonya Blade flex. was forced. Liu Kang was lost. I can make fire. <laughs> and Jax had little arms. Tyrannosaurus, <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Jax. Uh, you know what I think they could have did with this? They could have took the Marvel idea and made it work because everything was too forced in the time frame. I think if they would have did like the whole Disney Plus and made this a series, it might and might have developed better. It was just too forced and too quick, and it was just it was, it was to me it was a dumpster fire. It was the intentions were there, but it just wasn't applied properly. So I, 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 I can what? appreciate the story. Does the sequel get made? I don't. I mean, basically, oh. how? I if, Zack I, I, if Zack Snyder doesn't get a sequel from his Justice League, this doesn't deserve any time of day. I mean, this is this is probably like the third or fourth time they tried with Mortal Kombat, you know, and it just keeps. If I if I remember the first Mortal Kombat, I think that was the best one that I, I've I've seen, and I barely remember that one. All I remember is like the ending and um, you know, how they all was about to fight um, um, whoever that. Yeah, 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 and I thought that was pretty decent. But they had the Mortal Kombat two, and I think Annihilation came out like a while back or whatever, and then this one, and the franchise just just not done does well on um you know the movie screen and stuff. So I don't see how they attempt to make another one. And if I'm just looking at it um just just with my Marvel eyes or whatever, you know <laughs> I, I shouldn't keep uh, putting putting everything through like Marvel. That's not that's unfair to other movies that try to come out with special effects and you know quote unquote superhero type stuff. But you got these people with powers and everything, and it's pretty much the same type of concept. You know, people with powers fighting other people and stuff. But we get we get short <laughs> with so much stuff with this, you know. And it just it just doesn't make me want to see another sequel, you know, um, to this thing. Not it, even it, it, for free. Not even. <laughs> there don't you go. even put it on HBO Max. <laughs> didn't, didn't, none of us paid for tickets for this, right? Like we have to, we have to remember. Like we, we all want it. Like you know what I mean? I love John Oliver. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Like this isn't why I have HBO Max. This was just a throw in, and all of us are basically like, you know, if you put out another one like this. We don't know if there's going to be an episode on it or not. Uh, you know, I obviously, you know, you know this Trenton... is straight to video. I mean, this is straight to video. Seriously. I mean, I don't know why Warner Brothers, who, who you know, Helms DC, be, I mean, it makes sense that it's from Warner Brothers because they make the worst decisions when it comes to, you know, their movie making ability. Um, they, 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 they decide they want to spend the money to put this out in the theaters because this, the intentions was before the pandemic, you know, came was to put this out in the theaters. Are you serious for each of you guys? Would you have paid 15, you know, dollars to go see this, you know, movie? I'd have paid and been pissed. Oh, there's no way. There's no been, way I'd be this yeah, happy. I would have been, like, you have to watch it, I been apologized to the view whoever I went with. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry if you had to pay for this. I'd have, been, I'd have been so mad. I'd have been in there. I think as soon as, uh, as soon as they spent like, five or ten minutes with Cole's like wife and kid but they weren't really explicit about what was going on there I'd have been like you know what I'm out of here 
and I probably would have gone and watched something else. Right. But I mean, the first seven minutes had you hyped for it. You're like, all right, this looks yeah. good. The events yeah. are good. A tale of like samurai good revenge. Yeah. A tale yeah. of samurai revenge. And they're like, hold that thought for yeah. 96 minutes. And that's all we're going to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we had a really great idea for a really cool beginning and a really cool yeah. thing for three minutes later. We just got to fill in the other 90 minutes. What do you guys think? And everyone's like, we can do that. We can do it. Yeah, yeah. And they just started getting <laughs> Like, yeah, then he punches him. Yeah, then his arms break for no reason. Yeah, and then they get so big. So, 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 they insult our, insult our intelligence by teasing so many, like, you know, stuff for, like, a sequel, you know, where they're trying to build out stuff. Instead of concentrating on this movie here, they will stop teasing a tournament, you know. Stop teasing the fact that they're all going to unite at the end and fight, you know, against a common enemy and everything. None of that happened, you know. I'm like, oh, wow, this you is... Don't, you don't you know, need them. You got Cole Young. Keep your Cole Young. We don't need anybody else. And and Cole Young didn't fight the enemy at the end. He let you know. He let the the guy from the past do that. You know. I'm like, oh. You know. You know what really ruined it for me? He has all this power and he can't even break the damn ice. Get his family (laughs) out. Like, come on. Um, Look. Look. Melt. (laughs) <laughs> he has like these like, bars that come out of forearms like yeah. you know suit yeah, up yeah 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 and th- that didn't even way? come back there yeah yeah oh my goodness well i mean i so obviously trenton i mean we can we can just infer your letter grade uh you know it doesn't you know you, we know if we're not approaching a 70 we'll put it there <laughs> right, we know we aren't gonna make it pass uh how if, about you, you know how if I was grading this on a ten, I, I would seriously though, and all jokes aside, I, I would give it a six point five out of ten. I, it wasn't the worst, but you know, a six point five for the actors, the um, the choreographed fights, and some of the scenes, you know, the the fatalities and stuff were cool. So I'm not going to kill it, but it's a six point five. That's a D, right? So, oh great, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm about that same range. I'm about like a, the D range. I was going about, I was going to say about a six out of ten. So yeah. I'm right on par with that because. I did enjoy the fatalities, as you said, because the fatalities were, you know, video game esque, so mm-hmm. so to speak, and you know, and that's what you look for in that type of movie. I mean, the storyline was a one, but like the, the, graphics, <laughs> the, the graphics, you know, the the fight scenes, yeah, that that out, those were about an eight, so average them out. <laughs> well, uh, man. Yeah. Sam still doesn't even understand this. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, yeah. My confusion of the whole thing, you know, puts me at like a four and a five, you know. <laughs> I, I'll probably be getting like hashtags, you know, out out the day for that one. But you know, um I'm trying to find something past the seven minutes that I actually liked. And I cannot <laughs> find anything past the seven minutes. So there you go. I think for for was it what I was it what I, it was advertised to me as yes, they did the things I think they needed to do. So I can't give it lower than a five because I think five. If we get to a five, there were some very much broken promises <laughs> that were made. Yeah, if we're in the fours and the threes, I was and, misled. <laughs> exactly, and this movie, and this movie was not was not proffered to me as a as a Godfather two as you know <laughs> labyrinthine it? Byzantine plot that yeah, would twist I, me and like you know. And, am I being too hard on a movie? Um, uh, maybe. I think the five five's the standard the standard score. You gotta start you think with a five. five is just regular? I don't know, because like, I think you gotta grade it like you gotta grade it like a kid. I, you know, but I don't disagree with you either. I think it's a six and a half myself. So we we all have the same, you know, about the same feeling on this, which is not close, but no cigar and don't do it again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take a break. We're gonna roll some promos that we may or may not have recorded already. Who knows? Who knows which ones we're gonna drop on there? So stick around, and we're gonna come back with uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, five and six. So if this is a a, uh, a week with one uh, really sort of crappy uh, property, uh, we're going to make up for it when we come back. So we'll see you all real soon. Don't go anywhere. And here comes some some great promos. There we'll be promos. back in two and two. Put it, uh, two, up. Put it two up now, Trent. We all got to do it twos now. This is our thing now, Sam. Oh, you can't do it backwards. That means uh, after no? your friends. What? Uh, no, no. I can do it forward. Can I just do one on each? I don't know how to do these things. All right, we're cutting it. Bye. (laughs) And now, with an update on the Clone Wars, General Ken. And in this season of Clone Wars, we are going to see Anakin and Obi-Wan doing what they do in space with with the most discomfortable clones there are. Why are they so uncomfortable? We don't know. Maybe their shorts are binding up on them. Are there banana hammocks in space? 
this week on Carbonite Bounty BS. And we're back. That's right. I can drop the needle wherever I want because I edit it later. <laughs> Haha, ha, and that's behind the scenes stuff. So, welcome back to the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. Uh, for this week, we are back after having discussed uh, Mortal Kombat. We are now going to talk about uh, the real prop, the real property of the week, and that is uh, Falcon and uh, the Winter Soldier episodes five and six. So, when we started this biweekly uh, process, you know, we were talking about what we thought the story would be. Uh, in the end. The story of this series is how Sam got the shield and why he has the shield. A very, very excellent story. Sort of a real yin to the yang of Mortal Kombat, so to speak. <laughs> uh, the, when we last walked away from this series, uh, I believe John Walker had committed a murder in cold blood on TV. Uh, not not a great look. So this this sort of is this data my shows sort of the sullying of John Walker and, and Sam's feels the need to like take up the shield. And it really is portrayed in just an excellent, excellent way. You know, a real stuff. This is just a real, a real a plus series for me, for sure. Um, you know, DP, I'm going to give you the floor first. I know you got a lot to, a lot of thoughts about this uh, series. I wanted to just sort of, you go, you can start us off. Yeah. The whole captain America arc. I just love, I mean, you know, it's the best arc out of the, you know, all the, all the, um, you know, the Avengers and everything, you know, from where this series goes back to where Steve Rogers first took up the mantle or first, you know, took up the, um, you know, super soldier serum all the way up to like right now. Um, and the through lines are just like, you know, just there, you got a really good guy, a really through and through, you know, guy from the heart with Steve Rogers and, Bucky and Sam was trying to measure up to that, you know, throughout like, you know, their, 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 you know, through this series and everything. So at first, Sam didn't really want to take up the mantle with the shield because he didn't really feel like it was something that, you know, he was worthy of, you know, based on what Steve was. Steve was the leader. Steve was the, you know, the heroic one. You know, Steve was the, the one that everyone loved and was true. And Sam didn't feel like he was, um, you know, up to that. The episodes five and six, <clears throat> excuse me, really brought to a head on what Sam really wanted to, um, uh, what was really presented in front of him and really, you know, it, with, with him being brought to the table of, okay, am I worthy of carrying this shield? Because things that were done to, to, um, to, to, to his ancestors in his past and everything, um, he brought up the line to his sister What's the worth in doing all this, even though um, um, things were done to like, you know, African-Americans and blacks and everything in the past and stuff. What's the worth of of just me not giving up or just me giving up this fight if it wasn't, you know, if, if it's if I wasn't really up to fighting for it? You know, I live in this land. I live in this, in this country, too. And I am worthy of being, you know, Captain America, which essentially if you if you take out the shield, it's a substitute for the flag. Uh, if you take out the um, the the um, what they did to um, Isaiah Bradley, it's a substitute of what happened with the Tuskegee, you know, experiments and everything. What they did to to, to blacks back in like the the mid 1900s and stuff, <clears throat> you know, with the whole syphilis project, Tus you know, Tuskegee experiments, um, and Isaiah's bitterness towards American, you know, America and the government mainly. For everything that was done to him, um, Sam looked at that. Sam looked at things that were happening nowadays with like the what the flag smashers were, were were doing and everything, and what happened with Thanos and like everyone in the world. The world needed the world at this point needs some sort of symbol and some sort of hope, and he is encompassing that in a uh, in a big 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 way. And I think this series just really gave him a really great arc, um, you know, and to making him the and at the end Captain America. Sam, what did I tell you about episode five? Remember our uh, discussion? It was deep. It was deep. It was I deep. Think, I think episode five and the messaging <clears throat> in that episode surpassed all of what people think of Black Panther and the symbolism of Wakanda. The episode was really that deep to me. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to talk about it because literally there was just so much going on, um, you know, on each end. You know, you see... And as we get into the sixth, how, you know, and I'll tell you what, Disney and Marvel really put their necks on the line because we talk about how deep political things are. I mean, they really 
really push the envelope with this series on all all platforms and all facets as far as how they wanted to portray military, you know, racial inequality, um, you know, just different movements. I, I really applaud them for this series. I didn't see this coming at all. You know, five and six, uh, six was a little anticlimactic to me. I mean, it was a good ending, but I just expect a little more. But five was really five like was a I, point. Yeah, yeah, five was. I was just like, man, this is like really, really good. Yeah, I agree. Also, too, with uh, you know, besides all the the things that you just uh, just mentioned, but also too like. <laughs> Just the the injustice and and what to do with all these people that just came back, you know, so to speak, refugees, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like Marvel goes into explaining, you know, what are we what are we doing to all these people that just arrived back in here? So I, I feel that also furthers along the story as well too. Um, you know, not, of co- of course, the whole story was you know about Falcon, you know, gaining gaining the respect and gaining the shield, but you know, just just um, you know. The government, you know, like we're just going to place all these people here and not care about the ramifications of anything. Well, you know, Sam's there to say, you know, that's just not right. Let's, let's make this right here instead of just, you know, saying everything is dedicated to one to one group of individuals as opposed to spreading it out amongst the yeah, masses. Right. You know, in in uh, a TV show <laughs> from Disney, from Marvel Comics, asked the question this this spring, what is justice? And what is the opposite of injustice, right? This is this is the question that I think we are we are to answer when we talk about Sam versus Isaiah, and we talk about how, you know, I could understand. Sam says I can understand if they treated me like that, why he acts like that. But Sam knows that the answer to the answer to injustice isn't more injustice. It's not to perpetuate the cycle. It's to break it. And what he is is the embodiment of Captain America. Well, we talked a couple weeks ago about the shield and what it meant as a symbol and what a shield is. And we see Sam using this shield exactly as he should be, right? To stop, to prevent uh, a little bit for offense and in some really awesome ways. Let's be honest, that was really cool. When he shot yeah. those guys right out of that helicopter, yeah, I yeah. mean, that was really yeah. cool. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was really awesome. But he... <clears throat> This, this, the shield isn't just the American flag. It's the ideals of America. It's the things that, the things about the United States that are are true, like the way a bell rings. And and, and truth is is a funny thing. You know, someone like Thomas Jefferson, who obviously owned other people, could say something like, "All men are created equal," and it resonates through history precisely because of it is a true statement. And and the truth does that. And that and that is and that is a thing about truth and justice. And what the shield represents is real justice. And real justice isn't one-sided. Real justice isn't just putting borders back up uh, where they were. And the reason is that justice is all about what people deserve. And the world had changed during those five years. And the people that lived that deserve to have lived those five years, right? They don't deserve to have that taken away from them. And so what Sam is saying is that you have when you find <clears throat> this resolution, when you find justice for these people, it has to be for all people. You know, yeah. and, and that is another thing that is an important, you know, facet of equity, which is a which is a concept that is beyond equality because it means to each as they deserve, right? And that and that is that's the real question when we talk about justice, when we talk about you know right and wrong, that question of desert, like what do you deserve to get, is the main question. And to see Marvel comics on Disney addressing that in such a profound and, and, and intelligent way, man. Like, like I, like I was saying on our, on our off, off chat, you know, I just shut up and take my money. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. just have yeah. as much they, of it. They, like they, you need a little they, more to make this happen again. All right. Like you can, you know, it's, it's the craziest thing. I feel like uh, they, they, they can't do wrong. They, they, right. they, so they, they can't do wrong. <laughs> wow. So, so um, the thing with Sam was he was reckoning on things on two fronts. He was reckoning number one with his history you know, the history of like, you know, African-American is in, the, in this country. And he was reckoning with his best friend, Steve Rogers. OK, Steve, you know, is was was like the embodiment embodiment of, you know, blonde hair, blue eye, you know, um, this 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 thing that that they put into, you know, this this serum that they put into him and made him represent like, you know, American through like the greatest generation and everything. Captain America has always been political. So you go back into um, <clears throat> into um, when the Winter Soldier came out, Cap begin. That's when the Cap begin to start questioning 
uh, actually even really in Avengers, he started beginning to start questioning some of the government's motives because it wasn't the government that he <laughs> that 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 he encountered when he was back in like the you know in the 30s and um you know um back in the white uh, back in back in those days when he came out of the ice everything was just different to him. You know, the government was doing secretive things. And, you know, he he talked to Nick Fury, um, spying on some stuff with all those, you know, helicarriers and everything. That wasn't the, 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 the ideas that he felt should be represented in the country that he was represented. But he still wanted to use his shield to represent like everyone, which is this legacy that Sam is, you know, was reckoning with. So you got the the, the representate the reckoning of of like the you know the African American history in the country, and then what Steve represented was that ultimate sense of heart and ultimate sense of good, which is really great because Steve Rogers, man, that that that's my guy, Steve Rogers. <laughs> He is like, that's I mean, my Captain America. <laughs> that's my Captain America right there, man. You know, that's Captain America's and that's America's ass right there. <laughs> <That's America's> you <know? laughs> but, you know, everyone, you know, you just you, he has the ultimate level of optimism. You cannot get this guy down whatsoever. Whenever you try to talk him down, he is always there to lift you up and you want to go into battle with this guy. You know, that's what that's what that's what you love. That's what Sam loved about this guy. And I believe. That's why he put the shield down at first because he didn't feel that he could measure up to that. Then he picked up the shield again when he realized that, hey, I could still fight for, I don't have to be Steve Rogers. That's what he was telling Bucky. You're not Steve Rogers. You know, you don't have to be him. You don't have to listen to him, you know? Um, and what he told Isaiah Bradley was Steve Rogers didn't put you in jail, <laughs> you know? So it was the government that did that. So you have to separate the um the the, the those things that that a uh, whole system did because that was systematic oppression, which will happen with um with Isaiah Bradley, <clears throat> and but what did not happen with Steve Rogers. That that was a representative of what Steve Rogers was, and that's what Sam knew. And I think that's what in the end Sam felt that he needed to just pick up this mantle that Steve built. Steve built the shield. He built that representation of not only just the the american ideals but just the ideals of everyone because it's really a, a world symbol of what people in the marvel universe at least <laughs> uh, felt represent the ultimate sense of good so right. I, yeah go ahead right well, well you put down the shit at the beginning you know you didn't feel like he was worthy enough to to, to to carry that mantle that shield but then he saw what it was becoming and then mm -hmm. he's, that's when he becomes like there you go i i am the person who can make this change i can right. make this change for right. the better i right. can represent the shield the right. way i want to represent it yes. as me being captain america yeah you know not as steve rogers yes but as me as the falcon yes and yes. so yes. now this is the new captain america mm -hmm. not, not, not a black right. not a black captain america not a no, white no. captain america but a <laughs> captain america right you know he's no longer black falcon <laughs> no not at all <laughs> you know it was really risky and i was like kind of like uh, really a proud of the Disney was the reemergence of the U.S. agent and John Walker. And it really touched upon how people suffer in the military from PTSD. And I really thought it really hit home the way, you know, we're talking about blonde hair, blue eyes. That was him. And as he said, this is what you made me. Yes. And they literally yeah. threw him mm -hmm. to the trash mm -hmm. with no support, no yeah. help. Right. And I, I really thought that Disney kind of slapping at the government because people still suffer from that to this day. I really thought it was a nice statement for them to put out there and to kind of see his kind of reemergence of, of an anti-hero of some sorts. We'll see what the future leads for him. But uh, yeah. I kind of I started out hating him because his character was so cool. Not the actor, <laughs> because the actor is a cool guy, but the character I didn't like. But as his arc kind of changed, it was kind of like, he, you know, I can see him like as a Deadpool-esque anti-hero type you know, character. So I really felt for him. I really liked how they put that risk out what, there as what, far as what, showing. When they took away the man's benefits, I was like, really? I mean, it's, it's like but, that. Hey, but, uh, <laughs> that, hey, that, that happens every again? day. No yeah. way. Hey. There's no way that like his congressman would let that happen. There's no <laughs> yeah. way at all. Like, no like way. episode five, it made you like turn and make you feel for him for a moment. Yeah. Like, man, yeah. I feel bad for this dude. Like yeah. you, you rooted Did against him episodes one through four. Yeah. And then yeah. episode five, you're like, man, I've, this dude, I feel bad for this dude, man. Yeah. I mean, that's a microcosm for, you know, Steve is a microcosm for the greatest generation. We've talked about that. He's a symbol for them. 
you know, and and Sam and and John Walker are symbols for for our generation. I, I I've I you know we talked about it. I I space these guys that are in the <laughs> mid mid to late thirties, right? Thirty five to forty ish. These guys, Sam and Sam and John, both. Mm-hmm. And it's you know our generation. We're just um, you know timestamp this. It's a uh, you know it's late April of twenty twenty one, and they just announced they're going to pull out of Afghanistan after twenty years, and that's a meat grinder. And the 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 special like the real edge of the spear people in our generation have been honed that whole time. Like they 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 you know cycle back through, and you know we talk all the time you know in our society about veterans' mental health. And about how if people are feeling, you know, despondent, that they should get help. And and John Walker is 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 in some ways a microcosm of this. He's chewed up and spit out not just by the Captain America, you know, machine, but because when he served his country, things happened to him, and he wasn't properly healed because we're not we're not at a point in society where we're healing people's like souls, their minds. You know what I mean? Like we just lack that. And so we we have a lot of damaged people, and uh, again to get back to that question, what is justice? What do these people deserve? What do they deserve from us? What do they deserve from? It, it was a good parallel to what happened with Isaiah Bradley because the government is still up to their shenanigans. They're they're not yeah. taking care of their soldiers, you know, um, that right. that fight for their they, country. They, they use they use you up like a resource, yep. and then when your resource is done, they mm-hmm. move on. Well, Isaiah, yeah. that's yeah. what they did, and you know, and that's what they did with the with Walker at the end, you know. It, his time expired, and you got to move on, and that's what the—that's what they're portraying the government is doing. Well, Bradley is such a is such an interesting character as, as a microcosm, you know, of, of the Vietnam generation, and how that was, you know, <clears throat> disproportionately African American in the combat troops, and they were not treated well at all. They were not treated appropriately when they came back. They weren't, and so Isaiah Isaiah is again a symbol of this sort of of, of these soldiers, and right. so he works because of that because these are real shadows cast by the legacy of our history and that is and that's something that resonates in our in our time because our history is what is we have the same like underpinnings we had the same world war ii right we had the same civil rights movement as the marvel universe did they diverge different they don't diverge from us like that so marvel has this ability to say something about us you know and they're doing it and and i think that that's something comic books have always had the ability to do i i think maybe in previous generations they've been sort of pawned off as children's entertainment but i think that that's not what's happening i mean the marvel is as much 1a culture right now as any as anything else and yes it's it's, it's the monoculture of the moment and everything so every time a marvel product comes out i mean everyone's talking about it on social media everyone's just talking about it you know this show actually got criticized a little bit on this um the messiness because I mean, at the end of the day, Car- Carly's um, motivations weren't properly, you know, put out there, you know, as as well as they could have been. I mean, I understand what she was going through, but she wasn't that a compelling, you know, villain, if you want to call her a villain. And there's a lot of holes with Sharon Carter's character, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, too. Um, even that in post credits thing, I was just like, OK, um, they they. The, it, it, they they could have did a little bit better with trying to define what those two, Sharon and um, um, you know, Carly's, you know, what, what, what they were doing. I mean, if you were going to have John Walker as like the villain or whatever, um, and then he just turned straight, okay, I'm saving people now. And, you know, him and Bucky are chummy, chummy <laughs> you know, at the, at the final, on the final episode. I'm like, okay, that was a quick, um, you know, quick thing there, you know, and, 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 and he's not, you know, him and Hall about he's not being Captain America because he sort of left off that that fourth episode. Like, I want to be Captain America. I'm like obsessed with the Captain America, and he's just okay with Sam being Captain America. That was a little <laughs> bit of a okay. You know, um, it could have been done a little bit better, but hey, I mean, it's like it's like um, um, Trent said, for them to even come touch these themes and stuff, you know, is is re- is is revolutionary for Marvel because they weren't really doing it a whole lot, except through the Captain America movies when they did touch on, like, political corruption and Winter Soldier. And, oh, and Wakanda. You know, and yeah, Panther, yeah. Of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Civil War, they, I mean, Steve was talking about the government there. Why should we, <laughs> you know, um, um, follow orders, you know, follow their orders when they can tell us what to do anytime? So we got to go off on our own because that's not what we're about. Steve was my guy, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I can't say enough oh, about God. Steve. <laughs> I can't say enough about Steve. I'm you know going that, to battle with you, Steve. 
that ending was really unique too about the Sharon Carter stuff with maybe she being the power broker nobody knows. I think that Marvel put this on an edge because there's one or two different ways they can go. You know, phase four and five, there's going to be a big battle. They're doing Secret Invasion, and I think Secret Invasion, like Duche would say, I think it's going to Disney+. Plus. I think they're going to do that Avengers Secret Invasion, not as a full-scale giant movie, but I, I think the Sharon Carter is a scroll. I don't think that's her. I don't think Samuel Jackson I didn't was even him. figure about that. I think that's a scroll, and I think they're going to set up the next arc for Secret Invasion because the big battle will be either Kang the Conqueror or Galactus when they bring in the Fantastic Four, and that's not until a few years. So that's yeah, just my ideas. Where has John Krasinski um, been? Silver has he been... Burn. Yeah, that's your uh, galaxy brain. Yeah, I we think know. so. I I think King the Conqueror will be like the next Thanos, but I think the Secret Invasion will be something they'll pop in here. With the, you'll see, and that's where I think Captain America, Steve Rogers, will come back, and maybe he fights Sam or something. And I think that'll be a cool one because it won't be like in a cinematic universe kind of. I think they'll be able to do that differently than this. Mm. I'm still waiting to find out what Steve gets up to. Apart from, you know, because there's no way Steve's going to wait 70 years and actually do nothing. I mean, at some point he's going to get pulled into something because he's Captain America. That's not what happened. Well, why, the don't they just, why don't they just do what Loki they're doing? Because he, all he's doing right now is putting all the stones back. That's what I want. No, Steve Steve is back, right? Because at the end of Endgame, he's an old guy. He's yeah. back somewhere. So Yeah, but I mean, that's a long story he could tell, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, if he goes he back to like 1946 and then he lives the whole time. I mean, I'm just saying like, I don't know. For me, it's like, you know, we go to the Silver Era and maybe Steve Rogers, what would it be like if I... I want to see a what if maybe where he gets thought out in 1967 by Hank Pym or something like that. You know what I mean? Just something weird like that. I want to see a little bit more. It, it's a little like you guys are saying, what if? I don't need to see the actual plot. I'm right. fine with him riding off into the sunset and never, you know, having to pick yeah. up the shield again. But if they're going to do what if cartoons, you know, maybe I want to see what Cap, you know, would have thought about just the Beatles instead of all the rest of the stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just. A, maybe I just want more Steve Rogers. Maybe we'll see a groovy Steve Rogers. <laughs> yeah, right. He can grow his hair like this much longer. Uh, <laughs> can Sam pick up uh, the hammer now? Ooh, ooh, great question. Great <sighs> question. Yeah, great happened. question. It's, it's yeah, Thor. Thor, Thor when when, when I, Thor, I don't know. When... I mean, it took it took it took Captain America a few movies. And many yeah. years to pick up the hammer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But remember, yeah. remember. You just you know, can't put on the shield and pick up. You the can't hammer. just put on the no. shield and pick up that hammer. That's not how it works. Oh, but remember, we and we talked about this before. <laughs> Sam pointedly says, "I didn't take the serum." Sam pointedly says, "Just yeah. Sam. I'm just me, right?" I'm just Sam Wilson. I'm doing the same stuff I was before. I learned some cool flippy moves that I had to because the shield requires it. But that's all I had to do. I was pretty much and and really he's this the suit he's wearing obviously has more armor to it. But is it that different from the Falcon suit from a capability standpoint? Yeah. It's upgraded, but no, yeah. it's still it's got the Sam. wand of technology now. You okay, can sure, stuff. but it's still basically it's not like a whole new thing. You know what I mean? Like it's not it's not a completely new configuration. It's just a better version of what he was already doing. So I, 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 those I, I, wings are now made of vibranium. Correct. Fred, They're pretty, like indestructible. Pretty, yeah, they, awesome. yeah, the wings pretty, weren't pretty, vibranium pretty, before. When he did that. Yeah. But you know what yeah. I'm saying, right? He's still the he's still not yeah. Sam Wilson, Captain America. He's not. So it's, it, 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 essentially, he's Tony Stark didn't have like super fighting skills, right. you know. So <laughs> essentially, Sam is like a step a, a level up from like Tony Stark. But Tony, but but Sam did serve an army. You know, so Sam does have like no combat, combat skills. skills. Yeah. yeah, Tony yeah, Stark so. is. You know, they already groomed um, uh, Spider Man to be Tony Stark. That's, oh, of course, that's fine. That's, that's fine. already. That's, that's already. That's totally done. fine with me. Organic. Yeah. We like it. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Want to see more? You know, Want to see more Sam Wilson? I mean, I'm excited for for whatever they do next here. Like, uh, this is like, you know, the already, they announced they announced they've Captain already America four. So, it. Exciting, man. What ruined nothing? Whatever. No, we, couldn't do 20, we, we couldn't even get 24 hours. And it was like, oh, yeah, we're in pre production for Captain America 4. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I'm t the, the Trent's texting saying, I haven't even seen an episode yet. You know, he's saying they already announced Captain America 4. I'm like, okay, <laughs> wow. You know, what a spoiler and everything. But I mean, who didn't see that coming? You know what would have been um, the tip of the iceberg, real quick, DP? I thought that they would have. Uh, the kid be the uh, new Falcon. I thought yeah, his suit. Yeah. I really, yeah. I was hoping like everybody get whooped up and then he come at the end and just, you know, shoot, put his wings on. So that's like the only thing I thought they missed was the man well, or the I, new Falcon. I, I, I think they were trying to, to, to do, the, they were trying to make him comic book accurate so much. I always hated the whole wing thing in a comic book. If you're going to make him Captain America, leave off the, um, 
the wings and stuff. So as soon as they showed display the wings, I knew the um the the guy Ramirez or whatever or out of Torres that was his name was I knew he wasn't going to end up being a Falcon in this. So if he'll be in the Young Avengers, I, I, he's going to be something because he is in he's he's from the comics. So yeah. So yet another, you know, really a a offering from from Marvel. Uh, yeah. Yet yeah. another yet another ball juggled successfully. You know, you've got the. The vision, the Wanda vision, you know, um, sorcery. You've got mm-hmm. the Captain America, and want, and you see how it's all intersecting with the galactic stuff. You see how all of that's sort of spinning together here. We have, you know, the origin of the new Captain America here, and still to come this summer, uh, Tom Hiddleston as Loki in oh, just what is going to be just excellent. You know, you can, can already wait. tell it's going to be wild. So very, very exciting. Uh, and that and that's pretty much all. I mean, that's all I got. Do you guys are where are we as far? Do you, is there more discussion you want to do on on uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, or is this pretty much where we want to leave it for now? I mean, we at least got to mention Julia, you know, Julia Louise. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Say her name. This is a woman who's been who's been uh, famous and and hilarious and awesome and stuff since nineteen like. I mean, she was on SNL in '85. For, for oh man, okay, for, going way back know. there. Okay, I yeah, mean, honestly, yeah. and she's been only yeah. though from the Seinfeld days and stuff. But well, yeah, there's, well, there's Seinfeld. And if you guys, if anybody that's listening to this has not watched the entirety of Veep, do it uh, because it's really, really, really excellent. So very exciting to see her. I, I definitely love seeing uh, anywhere you can see Julia Louis Dreyfus. So she's yeah, she's supposed to pop up in the Black Widow. She was supposed to be introduced in Black Widow. But since this came out first, so I don't, I don't know when the movie's gonna come out. They keep like it's like three years old. Who cares? Now? It's not even a <laughs> Black Widow. Look, yeah. it's all good. It's gonna, it's gonna fill in the gaps. I can't wait for Black Widow. It's gonna I mean, be I'm awesome. Like, I'm, I'm there in the theater when it's when it when it comes out. Everybody, you know? we already so. can project. I'm gonna be disappointed by Loki and Black Widow is gonna blow my mind. That I already can tell. <laughs> That's what's about to happen. All right, I'm so just we- so happy we got so much Marvel content this year. Yes, <laughs> and this is what this is what Star Wars is gonna be like now too. So we're gonna get these two Ooh. threads rolling forward with all this awesome, awesome, awesome uh, content Disney's dropping on us. So, th- so they can. Op- I'm gonna shut up and let them take my money. Um, that's my plan for 2022. Anyway, uh, before we go. Any other final thoughts, Trenton? You got any? You, you. Thank you for coming on uh, this week. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, Trenton, thank you for course, having me. Our showrunner from Carbonite Bounty BS, where he does a, a much better job keeping the conversation sane than I do over here. So thank you for coming, <laughs> okay. uh, coming on. Uh, Michael, of course, always great to have you on board. One man, one name, lots of masks. Thank you. That's uh, all we need. So much. <laughs> well, that's it. And of course, my partner in crime, uh, the uh, wonderful, incomparable. DP been together five <laughs> five years now oh man this. Count, count. wow so that is the nerd psycho comic flick show for this week and we did a few things had some laughs cried a little bit <laughs> you know made fun of uh G- giggled giggled a lot giggled you know. a lot about uh, jax's tin can hands and uh, had oh, a fun man. time <laughs> and without further ado we're gonna end the show right there and that's where we, what we do here we don't do a thing so see you later be back in a couple weeks with some other stuff i guess that it's that time when my cat starts coming on the table. That's right. Uh-oh. As soon as I kept cats Uh-oh. on the table. Cats, cats on, the on the table. table. Cats on the go. table. See wow. you when we see you. All right. See you later, guys. And CFS. Nerd Cyclopedia.